Okay, hello and welcome to a brand new segment of my channel. This is where I will be essentially doing a Q&A. So I'll be looking at questions from Instagram from you guys, I'll answer them and I'll also be doing a lot of random questions I guess you could say of my choosing that I find online or in uh, current affairs or through the news that I think are urgent matters that we should talk about or that I think that are generally interesting. So, without further ado, let's get the questions started. Okay, so question number one comes from John Joe Bear, and he says, what sparked my interest in marine science? This is a good question. Good question to start off with. Uh, I've been meaning to do like a separate introduction video, uh, basically stating everything about my channel, uh, as well as why I wanted to study marine science. So, I'll do that here. My love for marine essentially started when my sister started working at SeaWorld. Not the American SeaWorld. No, no, no. This is the Australian SeaWorld where we care about a lot of the conservation and education side of marine life or environmental science. So it's nothing like that free willy horror show you'll see at America. No, no, no. So she cared for and looked after a variety of marine animals, or I guess you could say marine and some terrestrial animals. And so seeing her look after them and educate the general public really essentially sparked my interest at such a young age to want to focus on the, the marine world and get into environmental science. Now this would not be a what sparked my interest in marine science question if I didn't mention my boy David Attenborough. Through his visually gripping documentaries and his overall passion for the environment and environmental science you could say as well as the animals that reside there essentially piqued my interest in documentaries and why i really want to focus on marine documentaries and educate the general public through video and let's not forget that soothing british voice that he uses this is the biggest of all living reptiles. Oh, David, stop. Oh, stop. It's too much. It's too much in one day. So I was thinking just then, like, you've got David Attenborough's voice, which is like a real soothing English voice, right? So could you imagine that with an Australian accent behind the visually gripping cinematography that David Attenborough shows on his documentaries? No? Well, I thought of that and uh, let me show you what that looks like or sounds like. A bit of both. Crikey, take a look at this bloody monster of a croc, mate. Steve, you'd be so proud of this beaut that you're looking at right now. Yeah? Like, look at the gnashes on this beast. It's be enough to make anyone say, yeah, nah, catch you later. I'll be out of that water so fast, right over to the Barbie, mate. A real prehistoric killer. Dead set, mate. All right, so that's pretty much it. That covers the reasons why I started wanting to do marine science. One, my sister. Two, some random bloke I've never met before. Sparked my interest in marine science and essentially cultivated what I'm doing today. Great. All right, next question. All right, so question number two comes from Kuna, or underscore Kuna, underscore, let me get that correct. And he wants to know, why do sharks constantly rigor their teeth? All right, so the tooth or teeth of a shark in their mouth is constantly being replaced by teeth or rows of teeth behind that previous tooth that they just lost. Now, let me explain what that means. Sharks have multiple rows of teeth. This is different dependent on the species, but 
I'll keep it simple for now. So the front row, how am I gonna explain this? The front row, these ones, they're working teeth. And these are the ones that are under the most amount of stress when they are striking or attacking their prey and therefore the ones that are first to be lost. And this is because shark's teeth are not deeply rooted like human teeth. What I mean by that is a human tooth you can't really move it unless you knock it out of place. Shark's tooth, you can move it regardless. So, when a tooth is broken off in this row, in the front row, the teeth behind it will begin to move up like a conveyor belt of deadly gnashes and replace that tooth. And then the ones that move forward then get replaced by the teeth in the row further back and they get replaced by the row further back, so on and so forth, and there's your conveyor belt of teeth, or deadly pointy sharpie things. That's how they regrow their teeth. All right, third question comes from a non-focused camera. There we go. That ruined that. I just wasted energy. Great. Question number three comes from Joe King Six, and he wants to know what is my opinion on climate change or global warming. Great. This is a tough question. I gotta be real careful what I say here, because I am treading on some dangerous waters, mate. It's a very controversial topic at the moment, but I'll do my best. In my honest opinion. I firmly believe in climate change. Shocking, I know. But, here's my reason. This is because global warming and climate change are kind of the same thing, you know? No, well, same but different. You know, like same, same, but different. Global warming refers to the long-term effects of fossil fuels while climate change encompasses a broader spectrum of a global phenomena caused by the majority of fossil fuels trapping temperature in the atmosphere warming up the earth melting the icy poles more water more dark spots <laughs> Jesus so my opinion, we need to change. You've heard this before multiple times, in fact, unfortunately, but it is the truth. We, as a species, need to change the way we are doing things. The problem is, political parties aren't really lining their pockets with scientific theory on climate change or global warming, whatever you believe in. It's getting to the point where the consequences of our actions are outweighing the blind eye and if we can't learn from our mistakes, I'm afraid there'll be no future. The earth is warming and it can't cope. That's a fact. It's up to you. The people have the power to change. People have the power to fix, but ultimately, ultimately create a future that younger generations are proud to live in. That was depressing. Let's get on to the next question. All right, question number four comes from Rushies, and he wants to know, do mermaids or mermen exist? Who knows? No, but seriously, that's an interesting question because we see them in games, we see them in movies, and there's really no evidence to suggest that they can't exist. I mean, has anyone seen one? If you haven't, how can you say they're not there if you don't provide the evidence? The absence of evidence is the absence of truth. But I mean, I'm not sure I really want to meet a mermaid or a merman. In all seriousness, like, could you imagine the smell? Like, fish smell bad enough and some people are pretty gross. So, combine those two into one mega smell. 
mega smell, right? Yeah, it's not it's not pleasant. It's not something I want to see or smell these nostrils to pick up, right? So you mermaids or mermen out there, go smell somewhere else. You know, you probably smell like what Golem smells like when Frodo first found him in the Misty Mountains. Not a pleasant smell, I'd assume. But seriously, if you do exist, hello. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like, comment, and my camera will focus. Fifth and final question of the video comes from Thirsto underscore, and he wants to know, is water wet? You know, you walk out the door, you see someone that you know, and they ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Well, then comes along a song that speaks to you, that makes you feel like, gosh, I can... No? Yes? May? Yeah. Alright, in all seriousness, let me school you for a second. Water itself is not wet. Wetness is the ability to adhere to a solid surface. Water itself is not a solid surface, and therefore it cannot adhere to itself. Fight me. My address is... Okay, so that's it for the Q&A. Something totally different to what I'm used to doing, standing in a room and talking all the time for an entire video. But I hope you guys enjoyed it, because I actually kind of enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. So I will be doing a lot of these, more of these in the past, in the past, in the future. <laughs> I'm a time traveler, I wish. And hopefully getting a lot more of you guys involved, because I do want you to keep giving me questions, because that will mean that this can keep going on and I can keep getting all of you involved. And I'll also do, as I said, more of what I want to do. More questions that I think are kind of cool, kind of interesting, and that you guys will benefit off of. What is that? My name is Sloppy Jugong, AKA Zach. If you liked the video, leave a like down below, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you later in the next video. Bye.